as they play the Lafayette alma mater down on the field. We will send it down on the field to John Leone and Phil Ng, and we'll bring it back up here for the highlights. Okay, here uh, the alma mater is completed. John Leone will try to get a chat here with uh, head, head coach John Garrett. And uh, then we will uh, call it a day after John and Phil have a chance to chat a little bit and we show you the highlights of the ball game. Most important numbers are on your screen, 40 to 14. Tough day for the Lafayette Leopards. As they get ready for an Army football team that certainly uh, is an FBS ball club. So here's John. Thank you, Gary. Uh, John, a promising start. Uh, you knew Holy Cross. It wasn't going to be easy. This is the best offensive team in the league. Talk about the start and what, where, where, where things went south. Well, we, we, we did get off to a good start and really didn't expect that to happen. They just responded better to the situation. They were not deterred. All right. They, were, they didn't think being down 14 was anything and they just went and executed ball plays and and after that they just out executed us they really uh, dominated both lines of scrimmage uh, they uh, they made big plays they're explosive and uh, they stopped us as well so uh, really a, a, a convincing win by them you know coach uh, you've been around the game long enough obviously to know there are incredible emotional swings highs and lows you know, a lot of us looked at this game. I mean, we were right on the cusp. We feel like we're really, really close. How do you pick these guys up? You still got the big one with Lehigh, obviously Army first, but the, the program is getting closer. Is that your sense? Well, we just have to take it week by week and, and, and execute better. Uh, we got off to a fast start, and uh, we just didn't sustain it. And uh, uh, they're a good football team. Give them credit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Coach, good luck at uh, West Point next week. That'll be a lot of fun. It's always a great experience. And then the big one in a couple of weeks. All right. Thanks, John. You got it, John. Gary, Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, we'll come back to you in a bit. But right now we've got our highlights of today's ball game. So here's Mike. Well, there was a lot of scoring in this game, and it happened pretty much all at one end of the field. And uh, Lafayette started that scoring with a little speed sweep right here to Nick Pearson. Everything was looking good. And then C.J. Emil, and he, he had it going early. This is a 58-yard touchdown uh, run by him, 14 to nothing by Lafayette. And then kind of the wheels came off. Lafayette punting into the win. That ball probably would have been blocked either way. Lafayette trying to get some defensive players in. Kozier had a really nice day. That's a one-yard run. He had two of those. This is a big yard run by him as well. 28-yard run down inside the five-yard line, and then he's going to finish it off with another one. So at that point in time, you had a 14-10 to 10 lead for Lafayette, and then they had put that into the 17-14, uh, to 14, and then the things really went bad for Lafayette. They threw some ill-advised pass, not Sean O'Malley's best day, but I tell you what, it was a heck of a day for Jeff Wade. He was uh, ended up 16 for 21. This is going to go to Dean Nicola for 50 yards. Great body control for him there where Lafayette almost had the sack. And then you're going to see a really nice run again here. Just getting it across is Kozier. That's a 34 to 14 lead. Again, all of the scoring coming at one side of the field with the wind. Lafayette just couldn't get to the quarterback. And big Derek Mountain gets inside of Colin Thorne. Gets beat for the touchdown on third down. On this field, Gary, on this field, Jeff Wade is 37 for 48 for 517 wow. and five touchdowns in the two games that he has played here. And Lafayette got really just blitzed in the second and third quarter. And there you get a look at the numbers which show you uh, how much Holy Cross dominated the second half. The numbers were very close in the first half. So nothing pretty about this one, 40 to 14, thanks to Mike. And, of course, Pete Bowman up here in the booth. We're going to send it down to John Leone and Phil Ng to wrap this up.
Thank you so much, Gary and Michael. Great job as usual. You know, uh, a wise person once told me uh, there are some games when uh, you're a broadcaster and some games when you're an announcer. Uh, in a game like today, uh, under at least after the first quarter, you guys were broadcasters. You earned your money. Uh, it wasn't easy to watch, Phil. Uh, you heard uh, John Garrett's comments right after the game, obviously disappointed. Um, you've been through the ups and downs of a football season, Phil. Uh, take us inside the locker room right now. What's Coach Garrett's? Uh, what is his message to his team? Well, I don't think I know Coach Garrett well enough to know. <laughs> a lot of it depends on, you know, uh, his take on it. Also, what he feels that the players can, can feel, uh, you know, can take from it. Because I will tell you, if it was Bill Russo back in my day, we'd be getting this, <laughs> our, <laughs> our butts handed to us. At. Yeah. But uh, my, my take is that he's probably telling them, you know, um, put it behind you. You know, we play well. We, we can play well. Let's eliminate some of the mistakes. And, uh, and, and, we can, and we can be competitive. Yeah, you know, every coach has its, his or, or her own personal uh, approach to things. John is obviously a cerebral guy, uh, but he's got this quiet way uh, of getting messages across. Uh, and, and uh, you know, before the game, Phil, this is what s s sticks with me. Uh, there was such optimism coming into this game, and there still is. I mean, this is a team that's two and three in the league, and uh, we've won our last two out of three. Uh, we still have the big game with Lehigh coming up after an interesting trip up to West Point. Um, so uh, you, you, you want to have a short memory in a case like this. You want to put it behind you, right. and, uh, and let's not forget that three or four short hours ago, uh, things were looking bright. Yeah, and that's it, you know. Uh, we are a team that can be competitive. I hate to keep saying it that way. Uh, we are a team that can be competitive, but we got to eliminate the mistakes. Uh, we got to be able to, again, run the ball well uh, so that we can set up the passing. Really, the thing I think I take out of this is that we've got to be able to pass the ball down the field. We've got to stretch the field a little bit more. We can't keep relying on these short passes, um, you know, that if one of them goes incomplete, we're, we're you know, we're going to end up kicking the ball away. Yeah, and uh, again, we've heard Coach, Car uh, Coach Garrett's mantra, uh, be explosive, uh, don't turn it over, uh, and eliminate penalties. And uh, again, today, after that first quarter, I mean, we were explosive, we had no penalties, uh, and we did not turn the ball over. After that first quarter, we were 0 for 3, and the result was clear. Hey, before we get out of here, let's talk about next week's game. For those of you who've not been uh, uh, privileged to make the trip up to West Point for a football game, especially when Lafayette is part of it, please try to do it. It is an exceptional experience, uh, and there's something very special going on. If you're a Lafayette fan, Phil, can you uh, fill us in on that? Sure. I guess, you know, Scott came to us and said that uh, they're going to be uh, putting uh, what I guess are, in effect, pictures on the, uh, on the Lafayette L of um, uh, the, the various uh, players, uh, I guess a relative or a friend of theirs who was in the services, um, yeah, they're not. They're not ready as to show. As a memorial. Yeah, or, they're, 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 as a recognition, they're not right. ready to show us just yet. But the uh, Lafayette L will have superimposed on it uh, the face of a, of a relative or someone uh, who served because. We play uh, Army on the 10th, and on the 11th, of course, is Veterans Day, and it's our tribute, and a timely one indeed, as we travel to West Point. That'll do it for us, uh, a rather disappointing afternoon uh, here at Fisher Stadium, uh, but uh, more football left at West Point, and then the big one here against our arch rival, Lehigh.